Yo YouTube, what's up? It's Triple P. In today's video, guys, we're gonna go through CGO, the geocaching app for the Android phone. Let's roll. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna go to the Play Store, you're gonna download it, you're gonna put it on your phone, um, and then once it's on your phone, it's gonna load up like this. The first thing you need to do is hit the three buttons, click on settings, services, and you're going to click on geocaching.com, activate. And then using the service of geocaching.com, you accept the ground speak terms of conditions. You can hit OK. And then you're ready to go. It's going to, it's connected right there as, uh, as triple P. So, and now you're in. you're in. What other functions or features does this app have that are going to make your life simpler while you're out on the road? trying to grab a cache. Well, the first one is probably gonna be the live map option. So this is what my geocaching map on CGO looks like currently. These are all the caches that are near me that I have not found. Um, if you wanna see the ones you have found, you can go to map settings and then just unclick the hide show found caches and it will go away. Awesome, so what else can you do besides pull up the live map and look for caches out while you're driving. Well, there's a few things you can do. You can do what's called store cache. So right here, we're gonna click on this cache right here and we're gonna hit the little disc and it will save it. Now, if you don't have a list already started, you hit create new list, hit okay, you title it, then you hit create and it will show up. So I already have a list, actually I have two. We're gonna save it into the triple P list and hit okay. Now, what has happened is that cache has been saved for offline use. So if you lose connectivity, you don't have data, you don't have anything, you can still pull up this cache because you have saved it offline. Um, if you wanna put more than one cache in your um, list, you certainly can. Just hit another cache that you're interested in finding, do the disk, hit which list you wanna do it, hit okay. And now it's saved. Um, we're going to add a few more caches into our list because we're really interested in getting four caches today. And uh, we're going to do it really quickly. Great, now they're pulled up. Let's get out of the live map. Hit the back button. Um, from here, you'll see that it comes up as stored. And voila, here are the four caches that you have stored. Now, if for some reason you can't find them, click on the little button right here and uh, it will pull up the list of caches um, that you've already created, and it may be in one of those other options. Now, if you want to see them on the map all together with all four of them, you're gonna click the little map button at the top, and then you're going to be able to see all four caches on the list. So let's say you're interested in navigating or driving to this multi-cache right here. What you'll do is you hit the three buttons, you'll hit navigate, then you hit driving, and uh, Google Chrome, or Google Maps, sorry, will pop up. Okay, so what else can CGO do besides navigate you to the cache? Well, let's take a look at one of these multis right here. You click on it and you hit more details. From there, it brings up the size of the container, the GC code, the difficulty of the train, if it has any favor points, when it was published, who put it out, and the attributes. Um, if you're interested in seeing how to um, get there on the map, you just hit the button and it will show you the map. This will not provide you driving directions, but it will show you or what direction it is from where you're currently at. From there, what you're going to do is you can swipe to the right and it will show you the description of the, of the cache coordinates. If you, if you swipe to the right again, you'll see um, the logbook here. The red right there is a DNF by that particular person and the green above that means that person found the cache. If you swipe to the right and you have friends uh, that are on your friends list, you can see their name um, on the log and when they found it. If you go to the right again, it will pull up uh, images of the cache page. Okay, so you've, you've looked at the cache and you decided, well, you know what, I found it. So you hit the three buttons, hit log visit. From in here, you can type in whatever text you want. This was an awesome experience, period. TFTC, which is thanks for the cash, period. 
Now, if you're ready to submit your log, you'll see the little arrow button pointing to the right at the top of the screen. You're gonna click on that and it will submit it. If you don't wanna submit your log and count it as a find, hit the double back button twice. And what that does is it will show you that you have saved your log offline, but you haven't actually logged it yet. If you're like, oh my gosh, I made a huge mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Click on more details, then click on the three buttons, hit log visit, click on three buttons again, and then you can hit clear. Um, this button right here, if you wanna insert the day, the time, um, you can do that by clicking like the date and it will insert it automatically into your log. So if you're really into dates and times or timestamps, you can use that feature. Other things that you can do with CGO, you can go to the search option and you can search a cache by the GC code. Um, you can type in keywords for caches with, with words in the title. You can, you know, let's say you're looking for gadget caches, you can type in the word gadget and hit go. It'll bring up all the gadget caches. That's one way to search for gadget caches on CGO. Other things you can do is you can go to, you can filter by the type of caches, cache that you're looking for. So let's say you want to look for letterboxes. When you hit live map and you zoom out, it will pull up only letterboxes on the map in your area. You can do this for multi-caches. You can do this for pretty much any type of cache that they have available through geocaching.com. If you just want all cache types, you just click on that, all cache types, hit live map, and it will propagate the search results for you. Um, there are some other features on CGO, but I'm gonna make a second video on those. Um, so look for that coming in the near future. I hope you guys learned a little bit. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys out on the trail.